Hi there, I'm Professor Blackmore and welcome back to my channel and to another episode in my podcast series entitled Woman Evolve, the ProfessorBlackmore.com pre-show. And today in this multi-part episode, I want to explore the question of what happened to Pastor Toure's first wife, Lori Roberts, after he dumped her, allegedly, to date and ultimately marry his 16-year younger girlfriend, at that time, Sarah Jakes. Tell her story, baby. How'd you know I was the one? No, no I would agree. I think, uh, well, there was the initial meeting where it was strictly platonic. There was no romantic interest, which is supernatural. However, However. Uh, <laughs> about a month later, when we were with each other at a conference, uh, the scales <laughs> yeah, great. were Justify, removed sir. from my eyes. Okay, now during this particular time that they are discussing in this clip, Pastor Toure was still married to his former wife, Lori Roberts, and you notice how he makes sure that he does not give any specific dates, as if we don't know how to use the damn internet. And so in addition to discussing what happened to Lori Roberts in part A of this podcast episode series, I will also lay out the facts so you can decide for yourself if you think Pastor Toure met Sarah Jakes after he had already filed for divorce from his first wife, or if you think he and Sarah Jakes were already dating when he filed for divorce from Lori Roberts. And so, let's jump right in. And so from the very beginning of the relationship, Sarah Jakes and Pastor Toure have been saying that they, quote, met in the spring of 2014, end quote, when Sarah was promoting her book, lost and found and taping an episode of the Dr. Phil show, which aired April 1st. And what you'll notice is that they always strategically make sure to avoid using exact dates. Because if she met him when she was taping the Dr. Phil show, why is it necessary to mention the date when the show aired in April? But let me stay focused. So I can go back to this so-called initial meeting. I was just a humble servant coming <laughs> to do the Lord's work. Out on tour, it was in um, February, I believe. A business partner told me that there was a church in Los Angeles that he thought I should come and speak to when I was on tour. And so I was very focused. I was kind of in my Miss Independent Woman. I was preparing for this book launch. I didn't need no man. Um, <laughs> and so I came into the meeting and, you know, once again, very focused. He said that the moment he saw me, that his breath was just taken away. You know, I me mean, once again, doing the Lord's work. I didn't have time for any of those things. And so... Um, <laughs> We had this incredible meeting, and so he's telling me about this community of believers in Los Angeles. Now, this is taking place at the church that his former wife helped him build over the life of their 17-year marriage. The same church where his three children also attended. But I digress because, as you can see at the beginning of this clip, Sister Sarah reveals that this so-called initial meeting took place in February of 2014. And I'll let you decide from the way she's telling the story, whether it was a meeting or a date. But keep in mind that while this is going on in February of 2014, the ink was not yet dry on Sister Sarah's divorce decree from her prior husband, of which divorce decree was entered by the court on February the 4th, 2013. Okay, so you mean to tell me she just got divorced in February of 2013 and she's prowling around churches, pouncing on another woman's husband, allegedly, the first lady of the church, no less. And even as late as August 17, 2022, in a Los Angeles Times interview, 
Sister Sarah states, quote, in 2014, she was introduced to her now husband, to Ray Roberts through a friend shortly after the release of Lost and Found, end quote. And guess what? If you go to the internet, it will reveal that Lost and Found was released when? In April of 2014. And so, although they really want to push back the date when they first met and or when they first started dating, we can clearly see by Sister Sarah's own words that they first met in February of 2014. Now, when you read the Los Angeles Times interview article further, it states, quote, they met for breakfast. I was kind of blown away by her because she didn't look the way I expected her to look. Toure remembers. She wasn't this church girl. She had jeans on, ripped jeans, knee-high boots. I'm thinking like, this is a mega church pastor's daughter? But she looked like us, you know, here in LA, end quote. Now, mind you, this is what he's thinking at the time that he's still married to Lori Roberts. Oh, but anyway, y'all, let me stay focused. So we left and, you know, I tweeted the man of God and I told him he had a brilliant mind. He thought that I was flirting with Who him. Who tells a man he has a brilliant mind that's not flirting? She flirted with me on Twitter. Doing the Lord's work. <laughs> Doing the Lord's work. Now they sure know how to play with the Lord, but I guess that ain't none of my business. But, okay now, so he tells the Los Angeles Times that he's thinking while meeting her for the first time that his mind is blown away. And after meeting him for the first time at this so-called initial meeting, she's flirting with him on Twitter while she got a divorce almost a year to the day earlier. And he's still married to his wife, Lori Roberts. And he's a pastor of the church that he and Lori Roberts built together. Oh, <laughs> But let me stay focused, y'all, because clearly in the very first clip that I shared with you, he, Pastor Toure, is saying that there was an initial meeting that was strictly platonic. There was no romantic interest. But he clearly says, however, a month later, things were totally different, which in my mind means at that time, a month later, there was a romantic interest. And so let me put this on my timeline here, having established that there was what they're calling an initial meeting that took place somewhere around the first part of February 2014. And I'm saying the first part of February 2014 because if you go to the Internet, it will also reveal that Bishop's Leadership Conference took place in Orlando that year in 2014 from March 6th through March 8th. So, a month later from the first part of March 2014 is the first part of February 2014. And so, let me put this also on my timeline so that I can test this. So that you can tell me if you really believe this story about a first date taking place in April of 2014, i.e. the spring of 2014. At this particular conference, somehow, supernaturally, 10,000 people in the room, but, but God has us seated right next to each other in the front row at this conference. The pastor, who happened to be her father, Bishop Jakes, was closing out the conference, and he says, I want you to grab the hand of the person who's next to you. We're going to pray. As I took her hand, it was unlike anything I'd ever felt before. It was like I was not taking the hand of a stranger. It was my first time holding her hand. It, there was a familiarity. <laughs> Well, there's a familiarity because y'all are familiar, if you know what I mean. I mean, <laughs> and I love how we're supposed to believe that every damn thing is supernatural. And now you mean to tell me that you and Sister Sarah are in a conference from March 6th through March 8th of 2014. It's the last day of the conference. And you want us to believe that this is your 
first time holding hands, Pastor Toure? <laughs> so we're at this conference together in Orlando, and I just happened to see him uh, while we... <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, um, you know, we just waved or whatever, and then I saw him again. He came and uh, heard my session at the conference. And then that evening, we just happened to be sitting by each other. He just happened to be. And her dad is running the conference. <laughs> just happened. Okay. Was a coincidence. And so we're sitting through service, and I could tell he was feeling your girl. And so I once. <laughs> And then, so after service, you know, I had a moment in prayer. We, we held hands um, during prayer. And that's when the Spirit of the Lord really began to speak to me. And <laughs> Well, I'm glad the Spirit started speaking to you at some point, Sister Sarah. And if you were really listening, you would have heard the Spirit telling you that you're at a so-called Christian event and you're holding hands with another woman's husband and you're both clearly flirting with one another? <laughs> but I guess that ain't none of my business. Notwithstanding, you would have thought that after the Spirit started speaking to you, that maybe you would have stopped to take the time to think. But no, I guess not. And so, why is all of this activity between February of 2014 and March 2014 important? Well, it's important because on February the 7th, 2014, Pastor Toure filed for divorce from his ex-wife, Lori Roberts. And we're supposed to believe that they just happen to be sitting next to each other? I mean, is that really the only place from March 6th to March 8th wherein they just happen to be next to each other? And we're also supposed to believe it's a coincidence that Pastor Toure files for divorce during the same time frame of this thing that they're calling an initial meeting, almost a year to the date from the date when Sister Sarah's divorce from her first husband is finalized. She, uh, in that moment, she turns to me that night after the prayer, in Jesus' name, amen, and she says, uh, I'm coming to LA in a few weeks and you are taking me to dinner. He was like, did you know that? And that's my favorite scripture. And I was like, he wants to feed me. It's obvious, it's <laughs> written all over his face. And it did, it felt different. It wasn't yeah. like that awkward, sweaty palm so Maybe there was stranger. a little flirting going on just before that, just a tiny bit. You know, um, I, I can either confirm just own, own it, own it. Own it. Deny. <laughs> Well, I wonder if there was a whole lot more than flirting going on, allegedly. And, Sister Sarah, I bet you did think that he wanted to feed you, allegedly. But, I guess that ain't none of my business, neither. I mean, she's flirting and he's probably thinking I could actually marry into this megachurch empire, allegedly. <laughs> So let me show up conveniently at Bishop's Leadership Conference. That's literally a month away. But how am I going to be able to show up at Bishop T.D. Jake's conference and make a move on his daughter that is 16 years younger than me while I'm still married to my wife, Lori Roberts, with three children? And so I wonder if he was thinking, let me hurry up and file this divorce so I can at least say that me and my wife are in the process of divorcing. I mean, you clearly said that a month later, things were totally different than they were during the strictly platonic, so-called initial meeting with no romantic interest. And now for those of you who want to be all in my comments talking about how messy I am, which is one of my favorite comments. <laughs> Like this lovely guest who states, quote, just to be fair, in most states, you have to be separated for at least a year before you can file for divorce. Let's take the messiness out of the equation and assume that this man was not madly in love with his wife, met Sarah Jakes, then went and got a divorce within a month. Shaking my head, end quote. And to that, I say, okay, so if Toure and his wife was separated for a year prior to February the 7th, 2014, when he filed for divorce, 
That puts us at approximately around February the 7th, 2013, which is around the exact same time that the divorce decree was entered, ending the marriage between Sarah Jakes and her former spouse. So, were they dating a year prior, which could have been the reason that Sister Sarah filed for her divorce? Oh, but I guess this is also another supernatural coincidence, allegedly. Now, in a poll on the community tab of my channel, 88% of the people who responded believe that Pastor Ture and Sarah were dating prior to him filing for divorce, and only 12% did not think they were dating prior to Pastor Toure filing for divorce. But what do you think? Do you think Pastor Toure met Sarah Jakes by coincidence and started dating her after he had already filed a divorce from his first wife? Or do you think he and Sarah Jakes were already dating when he filed for divorce from Lori Roberts, which would definitely be the epitome of one woman evolving. Please let me know what you think by leaving your comments in the comment section below. And I hope you'll also give me a big thumbs up. And I hope you'll also consider donating to this video and my entire channel ministry by donating to the Professor Blackmore Cash App. And I want to also ask that you please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell so you'll be notified whenever I come back with more hot tea from the courthouse, the church house, and everywhere else. And whenever I come back with part B in this podcast episode series so you can find out what happened to Sister Lori during this ordeal. And please also follow me on TikTok and Instagram.